Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. We're gonna be reviewing an EV charger for you next on Alex Review. All right, so this is the Watt Savings S10. It's the US version. There's also an EU version. Mm -hmm. And I wanna be very explicit before we get started. There's two different plugs that you can get it in. A NEMA 650, which this is, or a NEMA 1450, which this is not. Make sure that when you are ordering yours that you know what the difference is between these and you get the right one, because if you don't, you won't be able to use it. Yeah, it's a very easy mistake to make. Yep. They didn't really name these for humans. They right. named them for bureaucrats. And it's not their fault. That's NEMA, it's the National Electric Manufacturers Association exactly. or whatever. Um, so let's get into what this offers. So this is a 40 amp EV charger. And what I really like about this charger is that it comes with two of these. These are RFIDs. And so you can put these on a keychain and hold them right up to here and start the charging with them. Now, when I first heard that, I was like, yeah, but I lose things a lot. Nice thing is it comes out of the box not needing to use these. These are only if you want to, and I'm trying to think of a use case for them. Um, there's a lot of different use cases. One would be if you kind of share a garage, like if you have a public um, garage, either you have a condo, you know, it's kind of open to the public, so to speak, and you don't want just random people coming in, plugging in. This won't prevent anyone from, you know, taking this adapter and sticking it in their car, but they won't get any juice. So if right. you're paying for that electricity, um, that would really suck. Also, if you have a business mm. and you want just your employees to be able to charge, this would be a great perk. Or if you want to be able to control, you know, who comes in and gets uh, juiced up, this is a good way to do that. But of course, you don't have to have it that way. You can just have right. this uh, relatively attractive looking uh, charger. Yeah, and it comes in four colors, by the way, white, black, blue, and purple. Mm -hmm. This one is light blue, light which is blue, really yeah. pretty. It also comes with this, a very heavy duty steel holder for the cable, mm -hmm. so you can hang that on your wall. It comes with this mount so that you can mount this to the wall and then mount that to the back of the charger. Mm -hmm. Very easy to do, which allows you to just hang this on the wall. Now, it's not attached very, you know, securely to the wall. Somebody could come and just kind of lift your charger up off the wall and uh, unplug it and walk away with it. So in terms of use case, you, you will have to somehow um, additionally secure that to the wall if you're worried about it getting stolen, which you, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I, it's completely up to you. So it has a 25 and a half foot long charging cable, which is really long. Um, I'm of the opinion that like 20 feet is perfect. Mm -hmm. Anything longer tends to be too long, but you know, an extra five feet is nice if you have, if you pulled in the car the wrong way and you need to reach the charging port. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, this is a lot of cable and it, I, I, something about 20 feet, once you get over that, you just end up with this. The, the tangle gods like start to tangle it for <laughs> the, you. Mathematically, I think it is actually more likely. Now the cable itself is relatively thick, I would say, and that makes sense. You're doing 40 amps through this thing. Um, it can flex, but I would say that it likes to not be flexed, um, which you know can either help or hurt when you coil it. And kind of a sticky cable, I would say. It hmm. doesn't, doesn't oh, flow yeah. past itself. And I think that's what lends itself to kind of getting a little uh, tied up. Let's talk about the other end. Mm -hmm. um, this is the NEMA 650? 650. 650, not the 1450. I wish it was six to 12 inches longer because mm. uh, if you picture putting this on the wall, if your outlet is perfectly next to, next it. to it and the, the right uh, way up, this will work. But if it was the wrong way up, you know, you'd have to do some kind of weird thing. I don't know, just a few more inches would have made it more right. flexible. Because this also has to be relatively thick and inflexible. This one is much less flexible than right. uh, the EV side. Um, and so, yeah, that can present a challenge. We've seen some that are slightly longer than this. In terms of uh, lights and features and stuff, it's got a reset button here on the side, which hopefully you won't need that often. Mm -hmm. It's got this um, LED here, which tells you a bunch of things. So you can look in the manual to see what like flashing red twice means mm -hmm. and so forth. It'll tell you if there's a ground fault or whatever. Hopefully most of the time it's just green. Yep. And also the colors are going to tell you what to do in terms of programming your RFIDs. In terms of programming the RFID uh, use case, um, the manual kind of walks through it. Basically, it's pretty easy. you hold a down the reset button for like 15 seconds and then uh, the LED will flash. You present the card um, and then your card is now registered. Again, probably not the most secure thing if you're expecting hackers to be showing up 
and no, charging. It's just to keep. EVs. It's just to keep the average rando from charging. Yeah. Spot. Again, this is not magic. This isn't hyper security. This is just like you're saying, normal people. What I like about this design is that this curve here on the top, if you can see it, is where you're going to be able to loop your cable over a couple times. So it's uh, using the charger as your holder of cable, which is kind of nice in addition to to this. Mm -hmm. All right. So then let's talk about the build quality. This is IP65 waterproof. Right. So IP67 is higher. This is not something that you want to get wet all the time. Again, I would put this under cover. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to mount it outside, make sure it's under some kind of roof or whatever. But most of the time, I would think this would be inside a garage. I think that the only offending spots to me would be like these two screw holes at the top. Looks like they're going to accumulate water if they're uh, left out in the rain. Right. So that's why it's not uh, a higher waterproof rating. That makes sense. Right. Um, all plastic construction. Um, it feels decent enough. Um, this front Fascia piece looks really nice uh, in terms of the finish. It's got this little sparkle effect that they've done to it, um, as, as well as having the lit ring right there as well. Um, it does say card here, so if you don't love that, I don't know, you'd have to buff that it's off. It's pretty light, yeah. It, I think that this looks relatively good compared to a lot of EV chargers that we've seen. If you're ever thinking of using this as a mobile charger, I would say no. It's just uh, too big and bulky and there's way better options for that. You can see some of our other videos. I would really just keep this mounted on the wall and leave it there. I mean, technically you could in an emergency um, take this up off the wall and try and cram this into your trunk if you had to get out of town quick and you needed an EV charger. It, you know, without any screws, you can, you can take this up off the wall. Right. Comes with all the standard over protection, so overload protection and so forth. So um, that's really standard. Uh, 40 amps means that you're going to have to make sure that your circuit can handle that. Because EV chargers are drawing that current constantly, uh, it is recommended that you oversize your circuit. So if it's a 40 amp circuit, you're probably not going to want this delivering 40 amps. You're going to probably want it delivering 32. Instead, you probably want a 50 or 60 amp circuit if you're going to be drawing 40 amps for like six hours at a time. Yeah, so 40 amps, 9.6 kilowatts, that's at the full amperage. I don't think there's any way to change settings on this to lower it. So if you're hoping to like share a circuit or to lower that. I don't see anywhere in the literature that you can do that with this. And look, normally you are going to be wanting to draw as much power as you can, right? You're trying to charge up your EV as quickly as possible, most likely. And to give you some idea, that's 37 miles per hour, depending on the EV. I mean, if you were to plug in an Aptera, you'd probably be getting closer to like 100 miles an hour right. versus like a Ford F-150 Lightning, where you'd probably be getting closer to 20. Right. Um, this is not, you know, unique to this charger. Um, it's unique to each and every EV that you're going to plug into it. So again, there are some specific cases where you might not want this charger because you want to lower the amperage and this will simply not allow you to do that. Um, but I think that those are going to be relatively few and far between. But again, you have to decide that for yourself and figure that out uh, ahead of time before you start ordering chargers. Now, if you want to be able to do delayed charging, so like at night, if you have cheaper rates in your area, you're going to want to make sure that your car can do that because this charger, as far as I can tell from the literature, can't do that. So this is just always going to do what it does. It's going to try and put out the 9.6 kilowatts every time you plug it in or wait for the RFID in order to start the charge. Now, if you've watched to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little treat. Uh, if you are one of our Patreons over on Now You Know, and we'll put the link right here, uh, you can join us and support the work that we do and have a chance to win this because we don't need it. We have a lot of chargers. We're mm -hmm. going to be giving this away. Make sure that when you go over to Patreon and you sign up that you uh, look for this posting and you make sure that for this particular one that you want NEMA 650, not 1450. So look at your plug outside first before you sign up for it because if this comes to your house, it won't work if you have the wrong plug. And let us know what you'd like us to review. Um, we've got so many options of things we can review now. There's so many cool things. We were talking just today about all these new new e-mobility devices that are coming out that are all electrically powered, but we want to know what you guys are interested in and the features that you want to know about. So let us know in the comments down below. We'll try and do that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. Those two buttons are super important. They only take a second for you. They're free, but it means that our channel is able to get more and more stuff to review for you. We'll see you next time. Now, now let's review. review.